This is part 3 of episode 11 about identity authentication configuration on the GWN switches. In this video, we will cover some features and parameters associated with identity authentication, such as guest VLAN and the .1x time intervals. With identity authentication using 802.1x method, if a device does not support 802.1x authentication or fails to authenticate, the switch port remains in the unauthorized state and the device is not granted access to the network. When you configure identity authentication with the guest VLAN feature, devices that do not support .1x are put into the guest VLAN when they connect to a switch port with identity authentication enabled. When an 802.1x capable device fails to authenticate, the device is not granted access to the network. In other words, guest VLAN does not apply if .1x authentication fails. This summarizes the process used by the switch to determine if an 802.1x capable device should be assigned to guest VLAN or denied network access. With guest VLAN enabled, the switch assigns devices to guest VLAN when it does not receive a response to its EAP request or when EPAL packets are not sent by the device. If an EPAL packet is detected after placing the switch port on the guest VLAN, the port reverts to an unauthorized state and restarts the .1x authentication process. We will use the web interface of the switch to configure guest VLAN with identity authentication. First, make sure you have guest VLAN added to the list of VLANs on the switch and the router. In this configuration example, we will use VLAN ID 50 as the guest VLAN. Under Identity Authentication page, enable this option and select ID 50. You can configure any VLAN ID as guest VLAN except remote span VLAN or voice VLAN. After you enable it globally, select the interface or interfaces that will use guest VLAN. Toggle this option. It is worth mentioning that the switch supports this feature in single user and multiple user modes. For instance, if an 802.1x capable IP phone and a computer connect to a switch port with .1x enabled using Mac-based authentication mode, the IP phone will get assigned the VLAN ID associated with the port. And because the computer does not support .1x authentication, it will be placed in the guest VLAN. The GWN switch supports .1x authentication with VLAN assignment by the RADIUS server. The RADIUS server can be configured to assign a VLAN ID based on the identity credentials of the connected device. The RADIUS server maintains a database of identity credentials and their associated VLANs. This can be used to allow users to connect to any switch in the network and get assigned the dedicated VLAN ID regardless of the connected port. When VLAN assignment is implemented on the RADIUS server, there are three options that you can select for each switch port. The default option is static. If the RADIUS server does not assign a VLAN ID in the authentication response or the assigned VLAN is not valid, the switch port is put in the access VLAN. The RADIUS VLAN information will be considered invalid by the switch if the VLAN is not configured on the switch. If static mode is enabled with port-based authentication, all devices connected to the same switch port are placed in the same VLAN specified by the RADIUS server. If this option is set to disable, the switch port will not apply the VLAN information in the RADIUS authentication response. You can set this option to disable if you need to prevent the RADIUS server from overriding the access VLAN assigned to the switch port. The third option is reject. If the RADIUS server does not include VLAN assignment in the authentication response, the switch port will enter the unauthorized state and deny network access to connected device. The .1x authentication process is controlled by specific time intervals. In this section, we will explain the meaning and use of these timers. This feature enables periodic re-authentication of the connected devices based on the configured re-authentication time. This timer applies to .1x authentication. This does not apply to the local MAC authentication which uses its own time interval. An active timeout refers to the amount of time during which the switch port remains in the authorized state after a connected device becomes inactive or no longer transmits traffic. 
If there is no traffic activity during that time frame, the port is automatically put in the unauthorized state and re-authentication is initiated. The quiet timeout sets the number of seconds that the switch port silently waits following a failed authentication attempt by a connected device before it restarts the authentication process. While quiet timeout applies to failed authentication attempts, resend EAP request timeout defines the amount of time the switch waits for a response before sending another authentication request to the connected device. In other words, resend EAP requests applies to connected devices that are not responsive. Supplicant timeout determines the amount of time the client device needs to respond to the authentication requests. If there is no response within this time frame, the authentication process will fail. The server timeout is the time frame within which the RADIUS server needs to respond to a switch. If the server doesn't respond within this time frame, the switch considers the authentication request to have timed out. The max request count defines the number of authentication requests to a device before the authentication session times out. This timeout is used when you have re-authentication enabled. Using these default timeout values will allow enough time for the server and client to respond to the switch requests especially if they are experiencing congestion or high processing load. This concludes episode 11 about implementing identity authentication on the GWN switches. Thank you for watching.